Hey guys. So sorry about those silly mistakes. Seems kind of, you know, silly. <laughs> Thank you for coming back. I know it's kind of like um, a headache to have to go back and forth like that. I really hope it doesn't keep happening. All right, let's move forward. See, but I would love to paint some of the skin tones with you guys, but the problem is that I have a reference photo that I need to be looking at to paint the skin tones. And my reference photo is on my, well, it's on my devices. So I'm using my phone to read the chat and I am using my iPad to stream. So I don't have an easy way to see my reference photos while I stream. Thanks for coming back. I appreciate it, guys. I know it's a little bit of a hassle. So this, the shading for these is going to go, it's going to be pretty gentle and slow. Hello? Good. Okay. <sighs> Let's see. Let's go into somewhere where we can actually add some detail. I'm going to bring you guys in a little bit closer so you can see it better. I'm trying to move it as gently as I can, <laughs> which I say as I slam it around. Okay. Is that any closer at all? <laughs> Probably not. All right, we'll do this for now. That's fine. I know that view is a little weird because it's kind of upside down. Van Gogh watercolors. I've heard a lot about them, but I've never tried them myself. It's kind of crazy because there's like so many potential videos to make, you know? How do I paint so big and not get overwhelmed? I think I have to take pieces a little a little bit at a time, like one step at a time. So like, um, you're either gonna make like really big strokes or the piece is just gonna take a while. And I'm just kind of resolving my myself to the fact that this piece is gonna take me a while to paint. I spent a couple hours on it yesterday and I'll spend several, excuse me, several more on it before it's done. Yeah, go grab your stuff and paint. I really like, you know, live streams are kind of a good opportunity to like slow your brain down and just take the opportunity to do something and like just sit. So that's nice. Oh, softball game. Thank you for coming, Lacey. I hope that your game goes well. Have fun. I, I want to start, I keep telling myself I want to have a schedule for streaming, and then I um, don't, because it's, it's, it is kind of hard for me to, to schedule a time to stream. Also because I want streaming to be a hangout thing, and not just a work thing, and once I schedule a time for it, then I'll, then I'll, you know, just gets differently, you know? You just start thinking about it differently. Aw, thank you, Kara. Yeah, I'll just, uh, if I schedule it maybe an hour or so in advance, I'll let you guys know. But most of the time, it's just going to be like today. You know, we just kind of pop in, here we are, we'll hang out for a bit, and it'll be fun. Have I ever taken an AP art class or AP studio? I have not. Um, when I was in high school, I actually didn't draw very much. I mean, I drew sometimes, but I didn't really draw to get better. It was just a hobby, you know? I did take AP classes in high school, but not for art, actually. That would have been a good idea. <laughs> yeah, this section of the painting is pretty easy for me to work on right now because I don't need my reference photo, so... Hmm. 
let's see. Oh yeah, scheduled live streams. I feel like if you get the notification when it's first scheduled or something like that, and then you might forget or you don't want to come back to it later, it's like, hey, I'm here now, I want to watch now. I think it's okay to do that with live streams, for sure. So it's kind of hard to tell, but or I guess it's maybe easier for you guys to see. I do have like some flowers I'm going to be putting in on this piece. It's been a long time since I painted um, flowers. Have I launched my handmade paints? Not yet. It's a slow process. <laughs> Just getting everything done and ready and making enough paint to have batches to sell actually takes a really long time. Especially just for one person. Um, and because I... Um, is this still wet? Yeah. Anyway. It just takes a long time. <laughs> Let's see. I feel like I want to darken the, the back background and add some more contrast. Let's do that. takes a lot of time for the handmade paints to dry, you know, and then you have to fill the pans and then they have to make enough pans. Ooh, this is a deep color. Oh, thank you, Kara. Am I going to have a brand name for my paints? I, I've been wondering about that. I don't know, to be honest. I haven't really decided if I'll have a brand name. Just because I don't know how how much a part of my business selling paints is going to be. Because I'm going to do it, but it's never going to be my primary business endeavor. I know, like, I know I could, you know, sell handmade paints and have that be, like, my job, you know. But then I wouldn't have time to, to do other stuff. And that's super important to me. So I think that handmade paints are always going to be a thing. Have you tried the hui on after you fixed it? Um, so the issue that I had with the hui on tablet, the hui on specifically, was just that the micro SD or the micro, sorry, the micro USB card reader wasn't working, but that was on my old phone. So it worked on my new phone, didn't have any issues. And then the, I have an, actually, spoiler alert, I have another digital tablet review coming this week, but it, I'm going to do it different than a standard review. I'm going to, it's, I'm actually really excited to talk to you guys about it. I'm going to be talking to you about, we talk a lot about art style, you know, sorry, I'm getting a little off topic, but bear with me, we'll get there. We talk a lot about art style and how everybody has to like find their style. Well, when I was first getting started with art, I, want, I had a very specific goals. I wanted to make a comic. That was what I wanted to do, like more than anything was make a comic. So the, the style I was working to develop in those early days was very different than how I paint now. And, um, boop, okay, sorry. And sometimes I still think about drawing, making comics because it's like, you know, it's kind of like my first love in art. That was what I wanted to do. So I want to make a video next, this week's video is going to be like, the, the art style, my secret art style, like the art style that I always wanted to have before. And I'm not upset that I'm doing what I'm doing now. I'm very happy about it. But it's just interesting how things just kind of shift over time, you know? Oh, I just realized you guys can't see what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be talking to you guys about like my secret comic style that I wanted when I was younger. And I'm going to use the digital tablet to share that with you guys, the, the, the other one I have to review from Parblo. Um, if you already know about that, my patrons know about it already because I've been sharing updates with them over on Patreon. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been stressing myself out for, for several days this week trying to make digital art look like my watercolor and gouache art. And it's just not working. It's just not happening. And it's been very, very frustrating. And so I, I, I just kind of had the thought the other day, like, why would I keep stressing myself out when I could try something different? and share, you know, share a bit about myself along the way and talk to you guys about, hey, this is what I wanted to do before and now I'm not doing that and that's okay, you know? Like there doesn't have to be one end goal for you as an artist. You don't have to end up in one specific place. Like you might end up somewhere totally different, you know? Like me, I thought I was just gonna be making webcomics. I didn't think I was gonna be 
doing watercolors and reviewing paints and have, even having a YouTube channel wasn't like, a, I didn't think that would be a big primary thing for me. Oh yeah, the chibi thing for my husband, that was different. That wasn't quite this style that I'm, that I'm going to be talking to you guys about. That was just, he wanted an avatar for the video game that he was playing or the PC game. So I uh, did that quickly for him. Thanks to Mark Crilly for the chibi tutorial. <laughs> that guy's a superhero. So yeah, we're going to be talk having some art style conversations on Thursday. Okay, so this might be my deepest value down here. I know, web comics. It seems like so far away from what I'm doing currently, so far, but it's like super ingrained in my heart and I, I have so many stories that I want to tell, which seems weird, but is that annoying that the uh, painting is upside down? If you guys could let me know, I will. I can shift it so that it's least sideways and not completely upside down. So let me know if it's annoying looking at it from this angle. Aw, thanks guys. You guys are really nice people. Super nice. I've actually been talking to my family about that stuff because, you know, YouTube comments can, it can be a dangerous place to, to try and have a YouTube channel, you know, and to post content. But you guys are always really nice to me. I mean, every once in a while you have comments that are not nice. Um, but generally speaking, I feel like I don't have to deal with stuff that a lot of creators have to deal with, like backlash and, um, you know what I mean? Like just people being like volatile and hostile. I feel like you guys are really supportive and encouraging and understanding. And I'm really happy that we can be that kind of community for each other instead of just, oh, thanks. So yeah, I appreciate you guys a lot. I'm glad that, you know, just to see that it's possible, you know, that it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be toxic. So I have a warmer green up here, and I really like how that looks. Ooh, we have a question. <laughs> I did a portrait of Jim and I did. Okay. Now, I don't know if you if you specifically mean uh, in my 100 heads challenge when I just sketched him. I actually did a small watercolor piece of him as well. And it's on my, uh, you can see it on Instagram. I gave it away, the painting itself. But um, I, I do like, I think I've talked a little bit. I do like B BTS mostly. I have, I definitely think about drawing them a lot. I'm just worried about drawing specifically people with whom I have to capture a likeness, you know? It gets a little bit more difficult when you're trying to capture likeness. But I really want to paint them. That would be like a free time project. But I think it would be really fun to do. <sighs> oh yeah, I think everybody definitely hates something about their work. We're, you know, we're so critical of ourselves and especially we're always looking at what other people are doing. It's so easy to, to be critical of ourselves. Because, yeah, and, and I think that's a really helpful perspective is to think that everybody is being critical of themselves. Like, your favorite artists post something and you love it and you think it's perfect, like absolute perfection, and they are finding something to critique about it. Always. I think that's helpful perspective. Oh, thank you. You guys are so nice. Thanks. Majestical anatomical art. Can we just like make that a genre and like that's what this is now? <laughs> Oh, good paintbrushes. I really like the ones I'm using now. These are the silver black velvet brushes. That's upside down. I really like them. They're very nice. Like, uh... 
Oh yeah, that, mm -hmm, the disconnect from the piece where I used myself as a reference. Yeah, I've thought about Frank, Frankensteining from other references, but it it's kind of difficult for me sometimes to connect with pictures I didn't take. You know what I mean? Because like when I take a picture, I have a specific intention, a specific thing I'm trying to communicate. And then when I use references, it's like I'm trying to pull from what the reference brings on its own. And that's difficult. I know that you could Frankenstein a lot of stuff together, but I also kind of picky about how much time I spend on things. And if it's going to take me hours to paint or hours to put together references when I could be um, spending that time painting. I do that instead. Yeah, calligraphy brushes are really nice. I've shown you guys my calligraphy brushes before. I really enjoy p using them for watercolors. Mm. <laughs> this mermaid piece. Oh my goodness. Yeah, didn't you say like since it's been like a month you've been working on that mermaid piece? Oh yeah, digital. Oh man, you get so into the details and then it's it's so easy, you know, to focus on the specific texture of one line and then like where you're not making any progress. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, I used to only care about digital was like the only thing I wanted when I was like just getting started. I didn't care about watercolor watercolors at all. I was like, "Nah, paint scary. I just want to do digital art." Oh, sorry. Uh, the uh, the brush I'm using right now is a size... I will check in a moment. It feels small to me, but I think it's actually larger than I think. Eight. Uh, this is a size eight. Silver black velvet brush. Nice. Okay, what are we doing? I, I really want to paint some skin. How do I paint some skin? And get some... I want to paint skin. You know what? We're just going to do it. So we're just going to paint some skin because I want to. So what I'm going to do is we're going to work on this other hand right here, I think. And then I'll just have to check the chat on my iPad and use my phone for reference. So I'm going to do my best not to miss your guys' messages. And I really want to paint some skin with you. And then we can talk about, oh yeah, if you post your, um, Work on p work your work in progress. Oh my goodness, words on Instagram. If you use the hashtag Arlie Bean, I have been trying to check the hashtag. If you guys want to share art with me, that's a good way. Or you can, yeah, I think that's the best way to share art with me is to use the hashtag. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let let me show you. Let me show you guys. You guys are gonna like this. I have a reference photo of myself that I took. And um. I will show it to you guys. Is there a way for me to view the chat? Top chat. Nope. 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 Okay. Hmm. Okay. We'll just leave it the way it is. All right. So if I miss your messages and you have a question, please do let me know. But I want to paint this hand with you guys. I just have to pull up my reference real quick. Oh, you don't have to be quiet students. I like talking to you guys. Did I save the picture already? Let's see. Nope. Okay. Oh, the question just faded away. I just missed it. If anybody sees a question and you happen to know the answer to the question, uh, please feel free to answer it. Okay. So I hope you guys, I'm going to show you my reference picture and I'm like a little bit nervous about showing it to you because it's a picture of myself. But anyway, I'm going to show it to you anyway for science. Okay. So this is the reference photo I took of myself for this pose. It, it looks a lot. I think the painting looks a lot like me. So I'm going to try to zoom in on this hand without zooming in on my boob. Excuse me for a moment. So this is the hand here and uh, I'm not going to keep <laughs> the reference photo in front of you guys, but I'm definitely using this for shifts in value as well as for shifts in hue in, in color. So let me just show you an example of what I mean. If we zoom in a lot, sorry, this is really weird guys, on this knuckle, like I can see this shadow is a bit browner to where the knuckle gets a little bit pinker and lighter. Why the bean? Oh, thank you, I wanna answer that in just a moment. Why? The, and then we can see like the finger gets pinker towards the outside and we can see highlights on the backs of the fingers and pinker towards the end of the finger. So those are the kinds of things I'm thinking about when I am 
painting the hand. The subtle shifts in value, where it gets lighter and where it gets darker, and then in, in hue as well. Uh, yeah, you yeah. When if you can use yourself as a reference, it's so great because you can just um, pose yourself exactly how you want and adjust your lighting if you can. You know, it's like the best way. And then you understand your reference. You know, you can look at the picture you took because you took it, and it just helps to understand things better. Okay, this is where I'm gonna try to put you guys. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Yeah, I get nervous about sharing pictures with myself. Okay, but thank you for understanding. Okay, so somebody asked why the bean in Arlie Bean? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so it's kind of weird. Um... I'm trying to think of how to articulate <laughs> articulate it. So my first car, <laughs> this is random. I got my first car when I was 18 and I named my car Bean because the model of the car was, uh, what was it? No, the color of the car, like the official color of the car was like espresso or something like that. It was black. I don't know why they called it espresso. I'm sorry, this is really random. But so I named the car Bean. So Bean just kind of stuck with me for a while. And then when I was trying to think of usernames, I wanted Arlie to be in it. And then I wanted something different at the end. And Bean just got stuck in there. And I, I like the way it sounds. So Arlie Bean. It, it's just something, you know, <laughs> from when I was younger, it just stuck with me. Okay, so we're going to start with the thumb. And uh, I'm looking at my reference. Hi, guys. Looking at my reference, and you can see that, I think this is partly because my finger was dirty, I had paint on my hand or something, but I'm going to treat that like a shadow. So I love mixing purples uh, with these two colors, because cadmium red light is super orangey, and Payne's Grace has a bunch of pigments, so they don't mix a clean purple. They're going to mix a pretty muddy purple, and that's my favorite shade of purple. The clean, bright purples, I'm not a huge fan of as much for my work. I love seeing them in other people's work, but I don't enjoy using them myself very often. Okay, so that, and then some paints gray, and you're going to see the color is, it looks pretty gray, actually, but it's purple-ish, relatively purple. So... Just so you know, my iPad's kind of like on top of the painting right now. I'm kind of painting around it. How did you learn to read values in colored objects and images? Um, it just, I think it just takes time and practice and learning, just practicing observing. You know what I mean? Like I, I wasn't, I don't think I was good at it before. And you just, the more you do it, like I think a, a massive, massive chunk of being an artist is just about learning how to observe and learning how to see things. You know, we talk about learning mediums and finding a style as being really important, but also learning how to observe because when you know how to, like, when you know what you're seeing and what you're looking at, you're actually able to, like, manipulate it. You know? Okay. And twist reality, but you have to know what reality is before you can twist it, which a lot of people will talk about with style, you know? So even if you want to draw anime, learning real reality, like learning actual realistic figure drawing is so important because all of that stuff translates. If that makes sense. Oh, that's a good idea. Like sitting in the same spot or looking at the same object different times in the day and noticing how the light changes, how the item looks different or whatever it is you're looking at. Okay. So I've got my same area here, and I'm going to mix more red into it, and add some more water. And then I'm going to, there's too much water. Somebody just asked a question, they said, will this be, and I missed it, I apologize. I can't see the chat for nearly as long on my um On my iPad. Okay. Per 
purple humans. Yeah. Purple's, purple's a really nice color for skin tones. I like to mix in with them. Okay, so I'm getting some more raw sienna to warm this up. Some red. Oh, goodness, this mess. Okay. This mix is a mess now. I have made it a mess. Yeah, there's a lot of purple people there. Anna has a lot of purple people. They're beautiful, though. Amazing, beautiful purple people. Okay. Do, 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 do. I feel like I was talking about something and forgot. Is that true? Was I talking about something? Maybe not. Probably like 80 things that we've since forgotten about that I've forgotten about. So this looks like a lot of colors right now and kind of a weird blendy thing, but I'm happy with how it's going. Ah, oh, so, man, how do I see the chat? Like, better. There! Yay! Am I using white night paints? Yes, thank you for answering that question. Yeah. Okay. You guys are so awesome and understanding. Even when this, like, when I get slowed down. Thank you for being awesome. Okay. Um, I have, wasn't planning to review any more AliExpress watercolors in the near future. I'm not saying I never would. I, I feel like a lot of stuff can get, like the affordable stuff can start to get really repetitive sometimes. I don't want this stuff to all squish up in there. But I do have some stuff I need to review. I have actually, I have a pile of watercolors. Oh my goodness, I'm getting a lot of color. Like way more than I want. Give me a moment to clean this up. Sorry, hold on. <sighs> colors to avoid in white nights? Hmm. The only colors that I've noticed that, like, I would say have, like, lower tinting strength and aren't really super impressive, they're kind of standardized in sets. It's like yellow ochre and cerulean blue. Those two colors, in, in my white night set anyway, um, those have been a little underwhelming. But I feel like a lot of it's so much of it's like personal preference, like what colors you like to use. Oh, do I check the hashtag on Twitter? Uh, no, but <laughs> I don't really use Twitter, but I will check it if you're planning to um, to post up there. I, I have, an, I have an, a Twitter account, but I, I never use it but I will I'll do my best to check it sometime. Okay, let's start fresh. Anyway, oh, look at that question. What is it? Have you ever painted in public? Yes, I have. I have a video where I painted in public. Do you guys know which one it is? Maybe? It's, is it, it might be a year old now. Oh, it's over a year old. Is that true? Or was that from this year? Or last year? No, that was last year. Yep, it's over a year old when I painted in public last. Uh, I didn't have nearly as many subscribers back then. And the video was not very popular at the time. I mean, that's okay. Not everybody wants to see that stuff. But anyway, yes, I have. It makes me nervous. I paint way less um, effectively when I'm in public. I just don't paint as well in public. I get too distracted, and I would rather just be where I am. And it's hard for me to pay attention. Okay, real quick, I wanted to say, I have a bunch of watercolors behind me. Sets of watercolors that I'm planning to do a giveaway for soon. So I need a little bit of time to set everything up for the giveaway. Some of the, the paint sets you guys have seen before from reviews or videos. Some of them were products that are sent to me that I'm not super interested in. Um, some of them are products that I've used and I'm not going to use anymore and I thought that somebody else could use them. So anyway, I am planning a giveaway soon. It probably won't be a Thursday video, it'll probably just be an, a bonus video some week coming up very soon, whenever I can sit down and make the video. But I have paints that need new homes, and I, I feel like you guys would like that, so, soon. 
soon. Within the next couple weeks, I would say. And uh, the, the giveaway will be open internationally, so anybody can enter, and there will be a bunch of different prizes, and each person can win one prize, just so you know, it's coming. Yep, it'll be open anywhere. Session. When you say suggestions for beginner watercolors, do you mean like brands of paint, or do you mean like watercolor techniques for beginners? Yeah, the Koi is all right. Koi is not my favorite. I actually didn't keep my Koi watercolors, but there are some people who really love them. I found them to just be a bit chalky and not super easy to work with, but it's been a long time since I had my Koi watercolors. I gave them away to a friend a long time ago. Feels like a long time ago. Oh, Sennelier. They're amazing. They're, they're just dreamy. They're so dreamy. Okay. Yeah, I'll be giving away paints soon. Part of me wants to just stop what I'm doing right now and show you the paints I want to give away, but I feel like it would be more effective if I waited for the video. <laughs> like, just wait. I always get so excited. And then I get distracted on live streams, too, if you guys were here for the live stream. Um, we'll just be working on something, and I'll be like, hey, you guys want to see this other thing that's completely unrelated to what we're doing right now? <laughs> Okay, if you guys want to see, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm doing this because I want to hang out with you. So, oh, thank you for coming, Chloe. Have a wonderful day. If you guys would like to see the paints I want to give away, or if you would like for me to just continue painting, and I can show you the paints when the actual video is ready, please do let me know what you think. Um, it would only take a moment to show you. Hi. And I can't give the paints away now. You can't enter to give them away currently at this time, right now. So you would just, you would see them and then you'd have to wait. You know? Yeah, Sonelli is awesome. Yeah, the Prima, Mar the Prima watercolors aren't bad. Um, I think that you can learn on them pretty well. You know? They get a little chalky and the sets I think are geared more towards crafters and um, journalers and things like that, but they're fun. They're fun. Oh, you're still here. Thank you for coming, Lacey. Bye. Good luck on your game. Everybody cheer for Lacey. She has a softball game. Woo. Okay. Let's see. So I've got little bits of purple in our hands now. And we're going to add some red. Oh, and this finger. Yeah, good luck, Lacey. Everybody's cheering for you. <laughs> That's so cool. All right, let's put some pink down here. I feel like I'm moving really slowly with these colors. Woo! Oh, that's so fun. That's so fun. Everybody's cheering. Yay. Okay. We need more red. Red, red, red. The reds are my favorite colors to add, hands down. Okay. I'm trying to focus on the areas that I see that have the most red in them in my reference photo. You guys can see all right I think okay just looking do I prefer warm colors or cool colors it depends on the color I like warm reds um, I like cool yellows or earthy yellows like super warm yellows I don't use a lot um, blues I like I don't know I like both I really like warmer blues like Indian chrome blue and uh, I, but I also really like cool blues, like phthalo turquoise is like my favorite. Or warm blue, that's warm. 
blue, cool, warm, blue. I, oh, you guys know, I get the blues mixed up all the time. But cool is closer to green. So that's Thala. <laughs> Woo, I'm a professional. Okay. Have I done, what was it? Digital art. Rip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My most recent video was about digital art. And I used to do it a lot. Uh, so, so, say I really want to try streaming on my art Instagram. Ah, but you're scared because you never have, you never touch. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Banana knows everything. Listen to everything she says about color, please. Okay. What was I saying? Oh, streaming on Instagram. I was really nervous too because I was worried. Oh, I see the question. Give me just a moment. If I could recommend one primary of each color in any brand, what would it be? Okay, hold on. First, streaming on Instagram. Uh, I was really nervous too because I felt like I had to be constantly entertaining or constantly be doing something nice. But what I learned was that people treat live streams just like hangout times. So if it takes you a minute to set up or to move things around, and you guys have been really helpful in that too with my with those streams I've done. Like I've cut, you guys have made it a lot more comfortable for me to just relax and um, enjoy the the process of everything so like I'm painting right now I'm painting way slower not way slower but considerably slower than I would if I wasn't streaming because I'm you know stopping to ask questions but also I'm working really timidly because I'm nervous about messing it up on stream <laughs> so I'm going pretty slow okay we'll start with that um, if I could, somebody asked if I could recommend, and don't apologize for asking a question, that's fine. If I could recommend one of each primary color in any brand, what would it be? That's a really good question. So for reds, my favorite red is either cadmium red light or a naphtal red, which is PR254. I love that nice warm, I love warm reds. For yellows, I prefer yellow, um, cooler yellows or like Naples yellow. So I really like Naples yellow. And I really like PY53, which is maple titanium yellow. Those are really nice. And for blues, I would say either Payne's Gray or Thalo Turquoise. So I really like this Payne's Gray by White Knights. Thalo Turquoise by Core is really beautiful. Um, M. Graham has a really gorgeous turquoise also. Yeah, so those, that's a couple recommendations for, for, that, for that stuff. Okay. Sorry, I'm saying the numbers. <laughs> I hope I said the names too. Did I say the names? I don't know all pigment numbers. I only know like my favorite ones. Oh, the tube of opera rose from Sennelier. No, I, I have never tried it. When I got my big set of Sennelier watercolors, it didn't come with, um, it didn't come with opera rose. So I know this is really weird, but would you guys be all right? No, you know, I know you would. Okay, I'm going to give you guys, well, okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of the watercolors I want to give away real quick. Um, nobody can call dibs on anything yet, of course, <laughs> but I want to show them to you. And then uh, I want to maybe paint a couple flowers. The current time is 3.01. Oh, okay. Here's what's, I'm going to show you the watercolors and then I'm probably going to have to go. I'm so, I apologize. We didn't get a ton of painting done today. <laughs> Okay, look, who's that? Who's that? Somebody call it dibs. <laughs> if you call dibs, you're automatically disqualified. No paints for you. <laughs> uh, you guys are, you guys are silly. Okay. So we painted like two fingers. <laughs> I will save this to my channel. Don't worry guys. Okay, so here's my hand. This is it. This is my hand. Okay. All right, let me get the pile. Do I'm gonna move it. Whoa, I'm gonna drop everything. Don't look, it's a surprise. Don't look, you guys. Don't look. <laughs> okay. Hold on, there's one more thing. <laughs> okay. Alright. So I have stuff to give away. We'll start with the little sets and 
work our way up. So the first set is this little just Winsor Newton cotton set. Some of these are used, just so you know, guys. Um, these are paints, again, if you're just showing up, these are paints I'm going to be giving away sometime within the next couple of weeks. Okay. So if you call dibs on the cotton set, you don't even get to see the bigger... <laughs> Look, marshmallow. Somebody just kick marshmallow in the shins. Okay. So this is my, <laughs> this is my little uh, cotton set. You can see I've used some of it. And it's fun to play with and to start with. It comes with a little brush. So going to be... Tori's amazing. She's fantastic. So going to be giving that one away. And then I'm also going to be giving away my Arteza 12 color set. This one is also slightly used. I'm going to clean these up before I give them away. But <laughs> Okay, so this is my Arteza set. I'm going to be giving this one away as well. Um, I like this one. <laughs> oh, the ice cream by Nestle. That's obviously innocent then. So yeah, going to be giving away that one. I really like this cool yellow mixed with this warm yellow from this set. So fantastic. Those two mixed together is really nice. You can see the colors I like the most because I use so much of them. <laughs> so yeah, going to be giving that set away. And then if you guys saw my uh, Russian watercolor review, I'm going to be giving away the aqua color set. Um, I actually already... Oh, I actually already gave... Oh no, they're sticking. <gasps> this is going to be a mess. Are you ready? <laughs> I actually already gave away the, the Sonnet watercolors to somebody else. Um, look at their sticking. <laughs> they must have been upside down. So this is the Aquacolor watercolor set. This is a 24 color set. These are really nice. Um, these are fun to use. I don't know why I'm doing this right now. They're probably not in order anymore. My husband, yeah, my husband has dibs. So yeah, I'm going to be giving these away to somebody. So how it's going to work for the giveaway, just so you guys know, um, is you'll be able to enter for as many of the different products as you want. So for as many of the sets I'm giving away, if you want to enter for all of them, you can, but you're only going to have a chance of winning one. And if you enter for all of them, whatever you get would be completely random, just so you know. Um... So if you really want one set, maybe only enter for that one. But, you know, anyway. <laughs> you guys. Aww. Okay, so here's here's this. I'm going to be giving this one away. And this one's in, like, a hard plastic case. Will I sign them? <gasps> if you want me to sign them, I will. I would be happy to if you want. I don't know if you guys want that. Okay. So giving that away. Aw, that's so sweet. Somebody had a quick question. What was it? Do your Paul Rubens sometimes come out of the pans? Hmm. Okay, I'll sign them. Aw, that's so sweet. Thank you, guys. I will sign them. Okay. And then um, I also have... I'm sorry, these got really messed up. My Reeves gouache. You can learn gouache with these, I think. They're, they're not, obviously, my favorite brand of gouache. But there's 24 gouache colors here. And I'm going to be giving this set away. I did it in... I used it for my review, and I'm not going to use them anymore. So... If anybody wants them, I'm going to be giving those away. You guys are so nice. Okay. And I'll sign them. Thank you. Okay. So this one's pretty exciting. This is by Dino. This is by this company. <laughs> anyway. This is a big boy. Yeah, big boy. Let me open it and show you. This set was sent to me for free. It, it just came to my P.O. or it came to my, yeah, it just came to my P.O. box. I wasn't even expecting it. It just got delivered to me. And they were like, hey, the company was like, hey, we found you on the internet and we like you. Here's this. So they sent this to me. It's very similar to the Koi watercolors. I tested them out a little. They're, they're, they're decent, actually. I think I like them more than Koi, but I'm not going to keep them. So this is a 48 color set. Large, yeah. And um, so you can see all these colors. And then it has two water brushes. It comes with two water brushes. Yeah, it's chunky. It's big. And it has like a ring on the bottom. So if you want to hold it with one hand, you can. Right there. Yeah. The colors are nice, actually. I have uh, right here. Oops. 
So I have a, let me find the swatches. I swatched out all these colors really quickly the other day. So here's swatches of them. They're pretty vibrant, actually. This is all the colors in the set. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. Okay. So that's all the colors that are in this set. They seem pretty vibrant. And I'm going to be giving this one away as well in its box. Oh no, did we freeze again? No way. I don't even see the chat this time though. 